We expect to ship our next major update, version 20.1, in May 2020. Among new Express App Framework, or XAF-specific features we'll include in this update, is security permissions for individual UI actions within XAF-powered apps. This new security layer allows developers to prohibit execution of both custom and XAF system actions in WinForms and ASP.NET applications. Before I get started, a quick note about actions. XAF actions represent UI commands within an application. These include a broad range of UI commands, from menu items and ribbon commands to navigation links. As you can probably guess from the title of this video, the purpose of this version 20.1 feature is to give XAF developers fine-grained control over user roles and hide or deactivate UI actions as needed. To help demonstrate the ease with which you can specify access permissions for individual actions, I'll be using XAF's main application demo. You can find this demo in our standard product distribution. Let's get started. To manage action-related permissions for a user's account, I'll first need to navigate to my sample app's roles module. Note that I'm currently logged in as Sam, an administrator for this application. As you would expect, administrators can customize user roles as needed. While XAF allows you to create an unlimited number of security roles, this sample app offers two basic roles, that of an administrator and that of a user. To customize the role definition for users, I'll click Users to view my app's user list. This demo database includes a single user, John. With John's record selected, I can modify John's type permissions, his navigation permissions, and as of May 2020, I can manage the UI actions available to him. For those new to XAF, I'll describe type permissions and navigation permissions later in this video. First, let's focus on our new version 20.1 feature. To specify permissions for UI actions, I'll move to the Denied Actions tab. As you can see, the action column includes a complete list of custom actions for this app. Now, let's say I want to restrict John's access to specific actions found in this sample app's tasks form. If we switch to the app's tasks form, we can see that it includes a number of ribbon commands, including postpone, mark completed, and show notes. My goal is to prevent John from accessing these three commands or actions. I'll return to the user role module, and I'll navigate back to the denied actions tab. Now I'll add the three commands, postpone, mark completed, and show notes, to John's denied actions list. Once I've added these three denied actions, I'll save my changes and log out of the app. Now it's time to log in as John. I'll enter John in the username field and we'll leave password blank as this demo app does not require passwords. Once logged in as John, I'll move to the tasks form. As you can now see, all three task related actions, postpone, mark completed, and show notes are no longer available to John. To make sure the commands are still available to the administrator, I'll log back in as Sam. Yep, Sam has access to postpone, mark completed, and show notes. Yes, setting permissions for individual actions is as simple as that. You locate the appropriate user account, navigate to the Denied Actions tab, and select the actions or commands you wish to deny for a given user. For those unfamiliar with the flexibility at the heart of the Express App Framework, I'll now cover XAF's other security-related features, including type and navigation permissions. First, it's important to note that XAF's security system allows you to configure permissions at multiple levels. Via type permissions, you can control access for object types and deny read, write, delete, and create operations that apply to system-wide actions like navigation, edit, and save. You can even customize form editors accordingly. Within a type permission, you can also add object permissions to protect individual records. You can specify record criteria as necessary to fine-tune access rights. XAF also allows you to create member permissions or field-level permissions. As you can see, you can control criteria and define individual conditions at the field level.
Finally, XAF offers navigation permissions so you can customize the navigation menu. Of course, developers can implement custom permissions based on specific usage requirements. All these permissions are stored in the database by default and thus possible to change this data at runtime, like we demonstrated earlier. These features are favorites among XAF developers because it allows teams to deploy their apps in production and customize the app without the need for redeployment. Now let's put this portion of XAF's security system to the test and show you how it works. Assume that I want to prevent John's access to the tasks form. Using the type permissions tab, I'll add task to my list, and then I'll use security access modifiers to set John's access rights. I'll specify deny for read, write, create, and delete for this type permission. I'll save my changes and log into the system as John. Once logged in as John, I'll navigate to the tasks form. As you can see, John does not have access to any data within this form. All field values are replaced with a standard security message, protected content. A quick note, I'm able to see this form only because the WinForms app saves layout settings between application runs. End users will not have access to this form under normal circumstances. Let me move to the tasks list view. As you can see, John does not have access to any task related records either. XAF's security system automatically filters data in the task list based on settings applied in the Type Permissions tab. Of course, if I log back in as the administrator, I can see that the task list is populated for user Sam. Very cool and very easy. XAF does all the heavy lifting for me. Okay, time to talk about the web. As I mentioned previously, this new feature applies to both WinForms and ASP.NET. Let me log into the ASP.NET version of the sample app to demonstrate. I'll log in as Sam, this app's administrator, and navigate to roles. Next, I'll move to the user role. Note that our changes to the desktop version are fully replicated in our WebForms UX. John's denied actions include mark completed, show notes, and postpone. I can make additional changes via the web UI. For instance, I can deny a new action. For this particular example, I'm going to deny access to the clear tasks command available in this sample app's contacts form. Clear tasks is a button that is visible when editing a contact record. I'll go ahead and log out and log back into the website as John. Once logged in, I'll move to the contacts form and select a record to begin editing. As you can see, the clear tasks button is no longer visible. John does not have the ability to clear tasks in this module. And just to prove that the button has not been permanently deleted, I'll log back in as the administrator and go back to the contacts details form. Yes, Sam does indeed have access to the clear tasks button. And that's it for this video. I hope I've given you a taste of the power that underlies XAF's security system. We'll be making additional tutorial videos in the future to explain security permissions in greater detail. For now, feel free to post comments below and tell us what you think of this new feature.